Hey all, Xeno back here for some more Mega Man X2. Last time I left off after two Maverick stages, and I'm just gonna mostly continue in the weakness order from here on out. Um, getting all the upgrades in the game without backtracking requires some slight deviation, uh, namely for more from off stage. But for the time being, we're gonna be tackling Bubble Crab. One thing I only recently noticed that I really like about this opening intro that he punches the ground at the exact moment uh, the beat drops in the intro tune. This stage is really visually pretty. Um, the sunset is something I'm really fond of here. It's just so beautiful, even though it's just 16-bit animation cycling effects. Um, this stage, I've heard some pretty mixed opinions on it, and uh, I would say it's not one of my favorite stages from this game. The The concept works. Um, it's done way better than other stages that uh, try and do a similar, like, chase sequence type um, thing. I'll get into it, because the level's main mechanic is about to show itself. So. Yeah. It's this uh, big mechanoid fish. And essentially, it's just going to... Uh, do its course around the stage, and your job is to either avoid it or destroy it. Um, the interesting thing about this thing is that it's made of a lot of different parts, so the way you destroy it is by destroying, I think it's eight of the uh, parts it has. This is a little secret alcove. Um, you can grind health for sub tanks here if you have Morph Moth's weapon, the Silk Shot, but since I don't have it, I'm just moving on. Um, one major negative of this stage, in my opinion, is that the secret design isn't all that great. These, I don't think I have found either of the secrets in this game, or this game, this stage, without a guide. Uh, the first thing is this heart capsule, which is to my left, you can't see it yet. What you have to do is, at the very top of this wall, dash jump, and it's just chilling up here in the corner. How you're supposed to find this, I have no clue, because even the uh, secret detecting helmet parts in Crystal Snail stage won't find this thing for you. At least most of the time they don't work properly, so um, I guess you're just going to have to crack open your Nintendo Power or an online guide in this day and age, but I feel bad for anybody in the olden days to like, find that one on their own. For as much as I like this game and sing its praises, there are some pretty um, obtuse secret designs. Even a couple that I found to be outright dumb. I still find some of these to be stupid. Here's another one. Um, the sub-tank for this stage, which is up here. But again, you can't see it, and I bet you probably have no idea. If you've never played this game, at least, you probably have no idea it's even there. Um, I guess I'll... I guess I'm grabbing that bubble. This is a bit of a funny idea. There we go. Anyways, sub tank. So it's up here. I believe that the developer intention was to use Bubble Splash, which is Bubble Craft's weapon, and to charge it up because that creates a shield that uh, increases your buoyancy by a significant amount. And thus you can just jump from around this point and reach your sub tank. What you can actually do, uh, in line with the no backtracking route, and thank goodness this almost like physics exploit exists, um, when you jump like this, you'll see that I gain a, a decent bit of height, but not a significant amount. But if you jump while moving down the beginning part of this slope, you will gain a lot more height, for whatever reason. It's right about here. Um, after executing that jump, what you want to do is at the very corner of this left wall. I'm not the greatest at it. There we go. So from here, you might think that getting the sub-tank is still impossible because, well, I'm so far away. But another interesting mechanic of the X Games is that on the surface of the water, if you tap the jump button rhythmically, you can see I'm kind of like wading and jumping. And you can use this to uh, grab the sub-tank. You have a slightly better timing than I do. I think I messed myself up by, by trying to uh, demo it. 
but yep, this will allow you to collect the second uh, sub tank of this route. There are many ways you can go about this, but. Getting on this wall can be a bit finicky, even when you know about it, you can see. And, uh, timing your button presses for the water is a whole other thing. I was able to do it once after uh, not too long when I practiced this. But, yes. Uh, I think the same type of block right now. I even tried to practice this. I wish I were better at this trick, so it would cause uh, less embarrassment for me. But, uh, it's neither here nor there. there we go. Uh, I'm usually not cooperating very well. I didn't have anywhere near this amount of trouble. I was able to just spam. Come on. Getting three. There we go. Oh my god. 
this is way harder than it looks, just FYI. I know I make myself look like a fool a lot of the time on these recordings, but um, unless you're well practiced, that trick is a huge pain to execute correctly. But uh, that'll save us a backpack later, uh, at the very least. Make sure not to dunk myself in a while doing that. Anyways, um, the giant fish mechanoid from earlier parks itself up here at the end of this stage. Um, this is also where the X Hunter fight uh, resides. Um, they don't choose to visit this stage in the order that I'm going in currently, but if they do show up on this stage, that's where the boss is. You have to destroy the fish mechanically before it reaches that point, though, otherwise you won't get to fight the egg hunter. Which, uh, is unfortunate. Um, that's part of the reason why, uh, doing an X hunter fight on this stage can be pretty painful, is because you really are, uh, uh racing against the clock there. Wait, this is weird to hold on. Pretty much all there is to say about Bubble Crab stage. Uh, if you fought the X Hunter um, in the route I showed above, then you exit here, which uh, is kind of nice. There's an alternate route that lasts for a short period of time. I don't think I've ever taken it because of the route I take through this game, but it's there either way. Uh, as for the boss, the first time I played this game, I actually started with Bubble Crab. He has a pretty simple pattern. Um, another decent starter boss. If you can catch on to his attack pattern quickly, you shouldn't have too much trouble beating him. He's weak to the spin wheel, um, which is pretty decent against him. I don't like this weapon too much in general, um, and actually the main reason of that is that you can only fire one wheel, and there's nothing you can do to reset it. So like right now, uh, it always leaves you in a situation where you just want to make a new wheel, but you just can't. Uh, the, the old one is still spinning kind of being useless some other place on the screen. Um, the charged version of it, though, is this uh, omni move directional attack, which is pretty cool. You just saw it as bubble cap was incinerated. That's about it, though. I wonder how much of that stage was just trying to execute the sub tank trick. Probably a good 30% of it, maybe more. Um, but it has to be shown for, for science that can do this stage without backtracking with uh, Bubble Splash. Bubble Splasher? Oh, crap, I skipped it again. <laughs> Guess we'll never know. I think it's Bubble Splasher. Not that it matters. Anyways. Every time you beat a stage, or I think they change when you game over as well, but you can see that the X Hunters move to new stages. So one of them, for instance, is now inhabiting Flame Stag's stage, which is our next, uh, stage in the order. So we're going to be encountering one of them there. Let's figure out who it is. Strange fact about uh, this... Wait, no. That's for the refight. There's a bizarre palette bug with uh, Flamestack Sprite. Either they fixed it in the Legacy Collection or something else, because I thought it was on the interest screen. Never mind. This track is a banger. Uh, just have a listen for yourself before I start yapping. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to start talking again because the uh, third sub tank is right at the start of this stage uh, with this little beetle uh, uh, mechanoid here. What you have to do is. Not that. You have to ride it to the top uh, like I. Oh. Kind of luck right now. Okay, it's it's to the left here, but because the thing touched it with the very leftmost pixel, that's why we're not seeing that. I guess. All right, time to suicide. Dumb decisions, you get dumb results. Let's show that off properly this time. The stage theme is a bang. Really gets you in the mood to run away from rising lava, which is exactly what this stage entails. 
be a bit more careful about getting this subject this time. There we go. Here it is. Very nice. You can, uh... Oh, there's a life up there. Hold on. How are you supposed to get that? Not sure. Oh, wait, maybe... Does charge bubble splash or razor gravity when used above water? Or above water? Oh, wait, maybe not. Alright, let's move on. The main gimmick of this stage is rising lava, which you're about to see. I need to make a beeline uh, because of the heart tank up here. There we go. This is a very satisfying grab. Run, run, run. Made it out. Both of this stage's collectibles are right at the beginning, so pretty simple uh, if you have to re replay or retraverse this stage. Now you know where they are. Pretty close to screen myself. Whoa. I've never seen that before. Is the beetle gonna come back? Alright, yep. Uh, bust this rock open if you're trying to get to the X Hunter fight, because it's up here. Collect lovely energy. I believe the movement patterns of the hunters is random, so which one do we have here? Now, oh, agile. So, they all have distinct attack patterns. Um, they all talk about their plan to revive Zero, which is one of the biggest plot points of uh, X2. I believe uh, Agile is considered the easiest of them. You can kind of lock them into a pattern like this. Um, you can constantly climb on the wall. I believe you just put this action and you see. No? I thought he wasn't. I knew he was. You can also dash across the room unpredictably like that. Oh crap. Come on. Do it again. Yeah, you can very easily get this guy into a uh, loop or no. Whoa, get out of here, man. Yep. And we're gonna get one of Zero's parts back for that. Zero part number three. That's probably the feet. Yeah. So Zero split up into three parts. Um, after his top 10 saddest anime death in X1, part of this game's plot is putting him back together again, so... That... Uh, yeah, I wanted that life, but I probably have stranded myself on this side. Oh, no. Anyways, continuing on. So, yeah. Put Zero back together again is uh, one of the fun little side things. Come on. He's, this section is pretty cool with the uh, natural gas, but it's also really annoying to get these things. Build them okay, Yeah, that should work. There we go. Yeah, this weapon is good for killing a few uh, otherwise pretty annoying enemies, but it has kind of niche, unique, niche use cases, uh, niche, unique cases, and that's basically it for Flame Stag's level. Just some volcanic sinking locks, sinking rocks. What is going on today? Um, beetles. This pumped, uh, pumped up music, which is great. It's weak to the bubble splasher. You know, fire uh, weak against water makes sense. Let's have a look. Very good stage. Probably one of the most most solid in terms of design of the series. Definitely of this game. It's very good. So flame stag's pattern is that he'll uh, try and pull a little bit of uh, Sigma's DNA from the first game and do some wall jumping shenanigans. I believe if you hit him with Bubble Splasher like I'm doing right now, he'll repeatedly do his uh, Fire Punch attack. But somewhere around low health, he might start to get a bit smarter. Let's see. No, he's dead. So, at low health, normally, he gets enraged um, and gets some blue fire and starts going berserk. He can dash and leave a huge trail of fire, some other fun 
stuff. But, yeah. Good level. Really good track. And the weapon's pretty good, too. Speed Burner, which is a generic fire projectile, but the charged version allows you to do the, uh, what's basically Heat Man's Dash from Mega Man 2. It's very cool. One of my uh, favorite charged weapons. That's where I'll be leaving off for the time being, though. Thank you for watching, and see you on the next episode of Mega Man X2. Casino, signing off.